Today's chapter is on the immaterial states. That is on formless jhanas. We are still in the realm of concentration. So this book was written on the three three broad subjects. Uh, Sila, morality, samadhi, concentration, and panya wisdom. So we are still in concentration. So this chapter deals with four jhanas, four absorption of immaterial, or formless states. So a person who wants to attain these immaterial states of formless jhanas must have already attained the four or five form jhanas or material jhanas without getting those jhanas he will not be able to attain the immaterial states so one who wants to firstly who wants firstly to develop the base cons consisting of boundless space sees in gross physical matter danger thr through the wielding of sticks etc because of the words now in order to go to the immaterial states or in order to attain the formless jhana one needs to find fault with matter so here first he sees danger in gross physical matter. That means he sees danger in mm, physical body. <coughs> and then he sees danger in it through the thousand afflictions beginning with eye disease and so on. So when we have this physical body, sometimes uh, we quarrel with some other person and we come to blows we will take up knives and we will quarrel and so on and also this physical body is a place of uh, many diseases beginning with eye disease ear disease and so on so thus he finds fault with the physical body so in order to surmount that he enters upon the fourth jhana fourth uh, rupa vajra form jhana in any one of the nine casinas, beginning with the earth casino and omitting the limited space casino. You know there are nine casinas, but uh, if you want to go, go on to the Aruba or Jarajanas, uh, you cannot practice limited space casino because that is already space, that casino is already space and space cannot be uh, removed so only nine nine casinos are uh, mentioned here the first nine casinos so now although he has already surmounted gross physical matter by means of the fourth jhana of the fine material sphere nevertheless he still wants also to surmount the casino materiality since it is the counterpart of the former now when he is in the jhanas, he is said to be uh, out of physical matters. But still, he wants to summon the casino materiality. Now, uh, the fourth, uh, let's say the fourth jhana. If he practices earth casino uh, meditation, then his fourth jhana takes earth casino as object. So, the fourth jhana takes Earth Kasina or the sign of Earth Kasina which is materiality as object. <coughs> so when he let's say when he hates matter, he hates any matter, whether it is the object of the jhana or uh, any other matter. So he also wants to summon the casino materiality. That is like a person who has seen a, seen a snake or pursued by a snake and he was afraid and after that even when he sees a, a rope or a, a crack in the earth he, he thought it was a snake and he was afraid of that something like that so since he was afraid of or since he uh, 
uh, he hates meta he hates the casino meta also so he wanted to surmount that casino meta too and the simile given is like uh, that a man who is pursued by this by a snake and then uh, the, the other similes are also referred to uh, similes of the dog attacked by a boar and that of the Pisaja goblin and the timid man. Actually, it means a man who is afraid of Pisajas. Not, not, pis, a, not a goblin and a timid man, but just a man who is afraid of ghosts, let's say. So a man who is afraid of ghosts sees something in, in the dark and then he thought it was a ghost. And so he was afraid of that too. Something like that. <coughs> Even, even those who have never seen a ghost in their lives are afraid of ghosts <laughs> because they, they heard from other people about ghosts. So a person who is afraid of, afraid of ghosts may be afraid of a, a, a tree stump or even it's, uh, his own shadow. So. When he thus becomes disgusted with or dispassionate towards the casino materiality, the object of the fourth jhana, and wants to get away from it, he achieves mastery in the five ways. So, he must achieve mastery in five ways mentioned in the earlier chapters. And then, from, uh, uh, then emerging from the now familiar fourth jhana of the fine material sphere. So, he enters into the fourth jhana uh, which he, he which he made very very familiar and then he uh, got into the jhana and then he emerges from it then he sees danger in that jhana in this way this makes its object the materiality with which i have become disgusted and it has joy as its near enemy now he finds fault with the fourth uh, aruba vajra jhana the fourth in material jhana he, he said it has uh, it, this fourth material jhana makes its object the materiality with which I have become disgusted. That means he is a friend of my enemy, so I, I hate him too, something like that. And then it, it, it has joy as its near enemy, and it is closer than the peaceful liberations. Peaceful liberations here means the immaterial uh, jhanas or Aruba jhanas. There is, however, no comparative grossness of factors here, as in the case of the four fine material jhanas. For the immaterial states have the same two factors as uh, this fine material jhana. Now, in the material jhanas, one material jhana is different from the other material jhanas by uh, by the number of um, jhana factors, and then by the grossness or subtle, subtleness of the jhana factors. But here, all four immaterial jhanas have the same number of jhana factors, only two. All four has only two factors. So there is, there is no difference in, in, in the number of factors with these four immaterial states. So there is no grossness of comparative grossness of jhana in, in these four uh, immaterial jhanas. Now when he sees the danger in that, in this way, and has ended his attachment to it, he gives his attention to the base consisting of boundless space as peaceful. Then when he has spread out the casino to the limit of the world sphere, that means he enters into the jhana, and then uh, his uh, his fourth material jhana takes the casino sign as an object. Then he expands this casino sign in his mind. So he expands as much as he likes to the limit of the wall sphere or as far as he likes. And then he removes that sign because he, he doesn't like that sign. He, don't, he, do, he doesn't want to be attached to the sign. So he removes that sign by giving his attention to the space touched by it 
or covered by it. And regarding that as or saying to himself, space, 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 or boundless space, boundless space, boundless space. Now, when he is removing the sign, he neither folds it up like a mat or withdraws it like a cake uh, from a tin, I mean actually from a pan. And a cake here means um, flat, flat cake. What do you call that? You, you eat in the morning. Pan. Yeah? Pan, uh, pancake, something like that. So when you, you take the pancake <laughs> from the pan with some, what do you call this? Spatula. Yeah? Spatula. <laughs> Spatula. <laughs> I don't know their name. So, not like that. <laughs> it is simply that he does not advert to it, he does not pay attention to it, he does not review it. So it is when he neither adverts to it, nor gives attention to it, nor gives reviews it, but gives his attention exclusively to the space touched by it, as space, space, that he is said to remove the casina. So when he wants to remove the casina, or the sign of casina, he just, he just stops paying attention to that sign. So when he does not pay attention to that sign, that sign disappears. So in its place there is void, there is just a space left. So that space he takes as an object for his uh, immaterial jhana. So when the casino is being removed, it does not roll up or roll away. It is simply that it is called remove on account of his non-attention to it, his attention being given to space, space. This is conceptualized as the mere space left by the removal of the casino. So this kind of space is called space left by the removal of the casino. Whether it is called space left by the removal of the casino or space touched by the casino or space secluded from the casino, it is all the same. You can call it uh, in, uh, with any name you like, but it's just the same. So space left by the removal of well of casino or space touched by the casino or space secluded from the casino. So the casino sign disappears and, and in its place now there is space. It is, there is void. So the, the, the meditator takes that space, it is a conceptualized space, that space as, as his object of meditation. So he dwells upon it again and again. So he adverts again and again to the sign of the space left by the removal, uh, removal of the casino as space, space, and he strikes at it with thought and applied thought. That means he, he pays attention to it again and again and again. Yes, he adverts to it and ag again and again and strikes at it with thought and applied thought. He, the hindrances are suppressed, mindfulness is established, and his mind becomes concentrated and access. He cultivates that sign again and again, develops and repeatedly practices it. And then he attains the first Arubha Vajrajana. Now, when he attains the Arubha Vajrajana, uh, there is a thought process. And, and the thought process is mentioned here briefly in, in paragraph 10, the second, second half of the paragraph 10. And here too, in the prior stage, there are either three or four sensual sphere impulsions associated with equanimous feeling. That means there are four javanas, four impulsions, four moments of sensual, uh, sensual sphere consciousness, four moments. Preliminary, and then what? You remember them? Sensual sphere or rupa? Hmm? Sensual sphere. It's not rupa? Not yet. But you are not in the, in the fifth rupa jhana. But when he is about to get the fifth, I mean, Arupa Vajra Jhana, <coughs> then there is this thought process. And in that thought process, uh, the jhana thought movements are preceded by Kama Vajra thought. Kama uh, Vajra thought moments. Hmm? Pari Kama, yeah, Pari Kama, Upachara, Anuloma, and Kotrabhu. Preliminary, access, adaptation, and change of lineage. These four moments preceded 
the the Aruba Vajra, Jhana consciousness. Change of lineage. Would you say those again? Preliminary access, adaptation, and change of lineage. And then next come the immaterial or Aruba Vajra Jhana or Aruba Vajra consciousness. The rest is the same as in the case of the Earth Casino, but there is this difference. When the immaterial sphere consciousness has arisen in this way, the monk who has been formerly looking at the Casino disc with the Jhana eye finds himself looking only space <laughs> because the Casino sign has disappeared after that sign has been abruptly removed by the attention given in the preliminary work that space space. He is like a man who has plucked an opening in a covered vehicle, a sack or a pot with a piece of blue rag or with a piece of red rag of some such color as yellow, red or white and is looking at that. And then when the rag is removed by the force of the wind or by some other agency, he finds himself looking at space. So the first Aruba Vajra uh, consciousness takes space as an object. But it is not uh, ordinary space or general space, but it is a space obtained or left after the removal of the casino sign. Now comes the text. With the complete surmounting of perception of matter, with the disappearance of perceptions of resistance, with the non-attention to perceptions of variety, aware of unbounded space. He enters upon and dwells in the base consisting of boundless space. Now, I have not talked about base consisting of boundless space because it is not accurate. <coughs> How many perceptions do, do, do we have here? With the disappearance of, I mean, uh, complete surmounting of perceptions of matter, one kind of perception. With the disappearance of perceptions of resistance, second kind. With non-attention to perceptions of variety, three kinds, right? So please look at the notes. The first kind of uh, perception is called Rupa Sanya in, in, in the Pali text. And Rupa Sanya really means five material jhanas and their objects. It is a little complicated. The word sanya, perception, is used quite often in the, in the sodas to represent not only sanya, but all mental states. So the word used is sanya, but what we must understand is it means all mental states. So here Rupa Sanya, let's say. Rupa Sanya really means fine material jhanas and their objects. Because the material jhanas take kasina as object, right? So kasinas are meta. So perception of meta here means the five or four uh, material jhanas. And also, uh, by play of the word sanya, they are objects. So that is explained here. <coughs> First, <coughs> um, complete surmounting of perceptions of matter. So perce perce perceptions of matter <coughs> is Explain in two ways here. But they have a question. Uh, you mentioned five material jhanas. Mm, I thought there were only four or five jhanas altogether, including the Arupa jhanas. There are eight or nine. If you take Rupa Vajra jhanas to be four, there are eight. Four Rupa Vajra jhanas and four Arupa Vajra jhanas. If you take Rupa Vajra Jhanas to be five, there are nine Jhanas. <coughs> okay. 
So, the first, when it means fine material jhanas, then it is defined as uh, sanya of, I mean perception of meta. Perception of meta means uh, perception taking meta as object. And here it means jhanas. So perception here means not only sanya but the whole jhana. Now why, why does this word signifies also their objects? Now here the word is explained in another way. Taking the word sanya to mean a name or uh, in, in, in this book it is translated as label. So a name. Sanya can also mean a name. Now the word rupa sanya is uh, explained to mean something that has the name rupa. So they come to be um, the objects of meditation, I mean objects of jhanas. The, the objects of jhanas are kasinas, right? Uh, earth kasina, uh, water kasina and so on. So they are also called rupa sanya because they are all meta and so they have the name meta. They all have the name meta. So they are called rupa sanya. So the word rupa sanya or uh, perception of meta is explained in two ways here in the in the uh, Visodhi Maga. The first one is Sanya of Rupa. The second one is something which has the name Rupa. That is why um, in a footnote the author said this explanation depends on a play on the word Sanya as the subjective perception and as the objective sign, signal or label perceived. So actually here it means a name, which has a name Rupa. <coughs> and surrounding both the fine, uh, five materi fine material jhanas and their objects, that means uh, he no longer pays uh, attention to the objects of the five jhanas. If, if he is uh, still paying attention to them, he will not be able to surmount them. Now he wants to surmount the five or four uh, material jhanas. So he has to uh, forsake all of them. Now the next is what? With the disappearance of uh, perceptions of resistance. Now, perceptions of resistance means perception uh, of something when there, where there is uh, something, something like a friction. Now, when you see an object, uh, it is said to, uh, there is said to be uh, a friction of the visible object and your eye. So these two come together. When the visible object come into the avenue of your eyes, it is said to say, strike at your eye. So they are called, say, friction. But in, in, the, in the translation, uh, it is uh, called what? Resistance. So the Pali word is patika sanya, the second word there in, uh, in the notes. And patika sanya, so there can be or there is uh, resistance or friction. And where can, where can there be friction? Friction between visible object and the eye, audible object and the ear, and the smell and nose, mm. taste and tongue, and tactile object and the body. So there are five kinds of Padika Sanya. They are Rupa Sanya, Sadda Sanya, Rupa means visible object, Sadda Sanya, sound, Ganda sanya, smell, rasa sanya, taste, puttaba sanya, touch. Is a cheta seeker that resistance? Yeah, so it's, contact. Uh, it, hmm? it's contact. Not contact. Not no, contact. No, no, this is friction. So sanya associated with two seeing consciousness, 
two hearing consciousness and so on, actually. So ten, ten kinds of sanya, right? <laughs> you, 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 you may not understand. Now, among the eighteen types of, uh, what do you call, rootless consciousness, there are ten, two of, uh, five pairs of two each, seeing consciousness, hearing consciousness, uh, smelling consciousness, tasting consciousness, and touching consciousness. Very good, yes. Yeah. So these are called here Patika Sanya. So disappearance of the perceptions of resistance or disappearance of the perceptions of mm, friction means disappearance of these consciousness, these types of consciousness, seeing consciousness and so on. When you are in the jhana, they don't arise in your mind, right? When you are, when you have entered into the jhana, only jhana consciousness arise, arises again and again and again for, say, for a long period, it, one, one hour, two hours, three hours, or one day, two day, and so on. <coughs> so, at that time, no seeing consciousness or no hearing consciousness and so on arise. So they are said to be, said to have disappeared. For those of you who have, have not the background, it's mysterious. And for those of us with it, it's only partially mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> so those ten, uh, these two are uh, seeing consciousness. One is the uh, result of bad karma, and this is the result of good karma. When you see an, an ugly thing, then you see with this type of consciousness. When you see a beautiful thing, a desirable object, then you see with this consciousness. So, see, two seeing consciousness, two hearing, two smelling, two tasting, and two touching. So, they, they, are, they are here called Padika Sanya. So, Sanya is perception accompanying these ten types of consciousness. They do not arise when you are in jhana. <laughs> so, that, that, that is uh, paragraph 16. Go back a little. Uh, paragraph 14. Yeah? With the surmounting, with the fading away, and with the cessation. And then, mm, both because of fading away and because of cessation, either in all aspects or without exception, of these perceptions of matter reckoned as jhana, which number 15, with the five each of the profitable, resultant, and functional. Now, these 15 are. This, this one, five, five, five. Can you use another word to say profitable? Choose another word. No. Profitable? Uh, wholesome. Wholesome. Mm, wholesome result in a function. And also of these things labeled matter, reckoned as objects. So labeled means which have the <coughs> name as uh, matter. And then in the footnote, the numbers are given. The numbers of the Types of consciousness are given, and those numbers are according to Table 2 at the end of the book. So the, the, the sequence is not the same as, as this chart. Number 9 to 13, 57 to 61, and 81 to 85. And so now uh, we come to paragraph 16. With the disappearance of uh, perceptions of resistance, that means with the disappearance of sanya accompanying the ten types of consciousness, uh, just show. 
now 17. Of course, they are not to be found in one who has ended upon the first jhana, etc. either. They do not arise uh, even when one is, uh, entering, has entered into the first jhana. For consciousness at, at that time does not occur by way of the five doors. So when you are in jhana, you don't see, you don't hear, you don't smell or whatever. Because you are completely in the my, my mental, mental uh, walls or something like that. So they don't arise even when you are practicing, I mean, even when you are in the first jhana. Still, the mention of them here should be understood as a recommendation of, the, of this jhana for the purpose of arousing interest in it. That is, praising it, it is good. Uh, there are uh, no uh, perceptions of resistance in this, something like that. Just as in the case of the food jhana, there is mention of pleasure and pain already abandoned elsewhere. So, uh, pain and pleasure are abandoned in the previous jhana. But in, 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 the, ex, uh, in the description of the fourth jhana, they are also mentioned. And that is also uh, to recommend the fourth jhana, that it is good. And in the case of the third path, there is mention of the false view of personality, etc., already abandoned earlier. So when describing the third person, the third uh, enlightened person, um, Buddha said, uh, with, the, with the extinction of the five lower feathers or something. But the, 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 uh, the three of those five are abandoned at the first stage of enlightenment. But they are mentioned again uh, with regard to the third stage uh, attainer, uh, just to recommend or just to praise it. So in the same way, here also, although uh, the, the perceptions of resistance are not, uh, not arising when one is even in the first jhana, yet they are mentioned here uh, to praise this jhana. Or alternatively, though these are also not to be found in one who has attained the fine material sphere, still they are not being there is not due to their having been abandoned, for development of the fine material sphere does not lead to fading of greed for materiality, and the occurrence of those fine material genesis is actually dependent on materiality. That means they are not there, not because they, they are abandoned altogether, because only, only through the, uh, the enlightenment can this be abandoned altogether. So not that they are abandoned altogether, that they do not arise here, but they are something like pushed, pushed back or something. <coughs> but this development of the immaterial does lead to fading of greed for materiality. Therefore, it is allowable to say that they are actually they are actually abandoned here, and not only to say it, but to maintain it absolutely. <laughs> it, it is a way of forcing you to accept <laughs> something like that. In fact, it is because they have not been abandoned already before this that it was said by the Blessed One that sound is a thorn to one who has the first jhana. So if they have uh, really abandoned them, then sound could not be a thorn to the first jhana. And it is precisely because they are abandoned here that the imperturbability of the immaterial attainments and their states of peaceful liberation are mentioned. And that Alara Kalama neither saw the 500 cards that passed close by him, nor heard the sound of them while he was in an immaterial attainment. So once he was sitting in meditation, so in immaterial attainment, Aruba Vajra attainment, and then you know, 500 cards passed uh, close to him, making noise and then putting up dust and so on. And then later on, his disciple came and asked him, did you hear the uh, cuts going by? He said, no, I didn't hear anything at all. So when this was uh, told to Buddha, 
And Buddha said, which is more, more difficult, or which is more, uh, what do you call that, amazing. Mm, a man who, who did not know 500 cards uh, passed by him, or a man who did not know while there was lightning and thunder and many people were killed by lightning and he didn't know anything about that. Then the, the man said, yeah, the, the, the letter is more uh, difficult and more wonderful. So Buddha said, once I was in, 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 in like that. So he was uh, in, in a immaterial state and there was thunder and light, lightning and people died. And later on, a man came to him and Did you, didn't you know anything about that? Said, he said, no, I didn't. <laughs> so you may read this in uh, uh, Dialogues of the Buddha, second volume, page 141. Do you have a Welsh book? Uh, the, 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 the translation of the long discourses. Right. Welsh. Yes, Welsh. Welsh, uh -huh. yes. So if, if, if that book uh, please read page 258. <clears throat> so, when one is in immaterial state, I mean, in, in the Arubha Vajrajana, you will not know anything. Even in your retreat, I mean, you don't, you don't hear the bell? No. <laughs> <laughs> Until you go out. Hmm? Until you go out. Until, yes. Before attaining into it, he, he, he makes his mind that I, I want to be or uh, let me be in this state for one hour, two hours, so on. What, six days? Yeah, seven days. Okay. Yeah. The next one. With non-attention to perceptions of variety. Now, perceptions of variety means perceptions that takes a variety of objects or perceptions that are themselves varied. So it is explained in two ways. Either to perceptions occurring with variety, that means as their domain. Sometimes the word domain is not a good word for the for the uh, Pali word kojara, as, uh, it is simply as their object. So they take many, many di different objects, and so they are called perceptions of variety. Or two perceptions themselves various. That means one perception is different from an, uh, the, the other perception. So although we are all human beings, one is uh, different from the other. We are, we are all uh, in, in individually different. So in the same way, although sanya is one, there are different sanya. Sanya is taking uh, visible object as object, sanya taking uh, sound as object, and so on. So they themselves are varied, and they take various objects. That is why they are called uh, in Pali nanata sanya. Perceptions of variety. So when. Uh, you see the word domain in this uh, paragraph, paragraph 20. So when you see the word domain, please understand it to mean object. And then, 44 kinds of perceptions are given here, about the middle of the paragraph. Secondly, because the 44 kinds of perception, that is to say, 8 kinds of sense fear, profitable perception, and so on, themselves have variety, have various individual essences, and are, are dissimilar from each other. So with the complete non-attention to, non-adverting to, non-reaction to, that means non-paying attention, non-reviewing of these perceptions of variety, what is meant is that because he does not adver advert to them, give them atten attention or review them, therefore, and so on. Now, the 44 perceptions are given uh, in detail here. But uh, the order doesn't give the numbers of the uh, types of consciousness uh, in the chart at the end of the book. You want to write them down? Let me see. 
to see eight kinds of sense fear, profitable perception, then twelve kinds of unprofitable perception, and so on. So, uh, the number in that chart, number one to eight, then number twenty-two to thirty-three. And then number 39 to 41. Then 42 to 49. And then 55 and 56. And then 70 to 72. And seventy three to eighty, now eight kinds of sense fear profitable perception. Sense fear profitable, profitable means uh, wholesome. So, eight kinds of sense fear profitable perception. 12 kinds of unprofitable or unwholesome, the first column. 11 kinds of sense we are profitable resultant perception. Profitable resultant means resultant. 11 kinds of sense we are profitable resultant. This eight and then this, this three. Two kinds of unprofitable result and perception. Oh, no, no, the, uh, the formula was these three. And two kinds of unprofitable result and these, these two. And eleven kinds of sense we have functional perception. And these three. <laughs> so all together, forty-four. Actually, uh, these are 54 since we have consciousness. So 54 minus these 10. <laughs> so those are 44. So nanata sanya or perception of variety means sanya accompanying these 44 types of consciousness. And two things should be understood. Firstly, that their absence is stated here in the two which is surmounting and disappearance because the earlier perception of matter and perception of resistance do not exist even in the kind of existence produced by this jhana on rebirth, let alone when this jhana is entered upon and well in that existence. That means the, the earlier perceptions of matter and perceptions of resistance, two kinds of... Uh, perceptions mentioned earlier, do not exist even in the kind of existence produced by this jhana. That means they do not uh, exist in the Rupa Vajra world, Rupa Vajra uh, Brahmas, let alone when this jhana is entered upon. So in that realm they do not exist. So um, they, they, they do not exist also when the, the uh, jhanas are entered upon and dwelt in. And secondly, in the case of perceptions of variety, the third one, non-attention to them is said because 27 kinds of perception still exist in the kind of existence produced by this jhana. Now these 27 kinds of perceptions are existent in the Aruba Vajra realm. That's why here it didn't say surmounting, but just say non paying and non non attention. There it says surmounting, because they they are not existent there. But here uh, they are said to be, uh, to be given no attention, non attention, because they are there but they are not paid attention to. So this is a difference. And the forty, I mean twenty seven, right? That is to say, eight kinds of sense via profitable perception. So please write them down. One to eight. 
and then 72 and 73 to 80 and 22 to 29 they are in the order given above and 32 and 33 For when he enters upon and dwells in this jhana there too, he does so by non-attention to them also. <coughs> he is not attained when he go, he does give attention to them. So here, just paying no attention to them, not surmounting them. And here briefly it should be understood. So this is the, the, the very brief uh, meaning of uh, the words given above. So by... Uh, with the surmounting of perception of meta, what does it mean? Abandoning of all fine material sphere states is signified. So, uh, by the words, with the surmounting of perceptions of meta, is meant that with the surmounting of fi fine material jhanas, 